equates to um, possible run. A lot of people think so. I assume that a lot of the people here may have, and if you haven't, I hope you will, read the declassified uh, report by the intelligence community that came out in early January. This is 17 agencies. 17 agencies, all in agreement, which I know from my experience as a senator and secretary of state is, is hard to get. They concluded with high confidence that the Russians ran an extensive information war campaign against my campaign to influence voters in the election. They did it through paid advertising, we think. They did it through uh, false news sites. They did it through these thousand agents. They did it through machine learning, which you know kept spewing out this stuff over and over again. The algorithms that they developed now. So that was the conclusion. And I think it's fair to ask, how did that actually influence the campaign? And how did they know what messages to deliver? Who told them? Who told them? Yeah. Who were they coordinating with or colluding with? Because the Russians historically, in the last couple of decades, and then increasingly, you know, are launching cyber attacks. And they are stealing vast amounts of information. And a lot of the information they've stolen, they've used for internal purposes, to affect markets, to affect um, the intelligence services, etc. So this was different because they went public and they were conveying this uh, weaponized information and the content of it. And they were running, you know, there's all these stories about, you know, guys over in Macedonia who are running these fake news sites. And, I, you know, I've seen them now and you, you sit there and it looks like a, you know, sort of low level CNN operation. And or a got, fake newspaper, or like a fake the Denver news, Guardian. Like a fake running, newspaper. Yeah. And so... The Russians, in my opinion, and based on the intel and counter intel people I've talked to, could not have known how best to weaponize that information unless they had been guided. And here's a here's guided by Americans, guided by Americans and guided by people who had, you know, polling and data. Hillary Clinton blaming 24 different things for the election loss, but not one. Pointing to her and her dismal approval ratings because of the lies about the emails, the lies about her servers, the lies about money. And she's been involved with Russia as secretary of state. Questionable items there with her foundation, with donations and spending, uh, which she hasn't been prosecuted for, but under investigation still about these particular things. But forget about her connecting with the voters. Forget about the message. Uh, and the money that the Clinton administration, the Clinton folks, her camp, ex-Clintonites, whatever, working with the Clinton campaign, all the liberal media on their sides going after Donald Trump about every single possible thing and all the money of Hollywood, no matter what they did, could not counteract how people really felt about Hillary Rotten Clinton. It was very obvious to most Americans that she was a liar, though Donald Trump may have not been the perfect candidate. Uh, certainly was not as slimy and sleazy as Hillary Rotten Clinton, a politician, after her own needs, her own concerns. Anybody ever thought that Hillary Clinton really loves this country? He's got to be on crack or something. Because she didn't resonate, she didn't connect, not like Bill Clinton, not like Barack Obama. How in the world do you follow an act like Barack Hussein Obama or Bill Clinton. It's a little difficult to do. It's a tough act to follow. Um, the delivery for Donald Trump may not have been as polished, but man, he had the media eating out of his hand and it had nothing to do with Russia, with his showmanship. Uh, Donald Trump has been a showman all his life before The Apprentice with putting on uh, an act when you uh, are showing real estate or you're trying to seal a deal, you can charm people and you can say things. And the media definitely tighten the screws. 
So he knows what to do, when to do it, where to go, where to stand, where the cameras are, all that good stuff. But a master communicator may not come out that way with the voice, but the content, what he said, how he said it, it helped him. He beat all the established Republicans. They had nothing to do with uh, fake news agencies. And by the way, the Internet's been littered with millions of just garbage didn't every anyone ever tell you you can't believe everything you find on the internet come on but this is hillary clinton this is she's trying to make trying to make some kind of reasonable comeback and again trying to get some more supporters garner some more supporters so she can have influence because really nobody uh that uh, seems to be in control there with uh, the party. And Hillary Clinton taking questions, I couldn't believe it, at this tech conference and trying to heap the blame on the Russians and fake news and uh, all this information. Uh, Unbelievable. She goes, uh, what is this? We're running these fake news sites. You know, I've seen them now. And you sit there and it looks like, you know, sort of the low level CNN operation or fake news newspaper. Forget about what you were doing. Forget about what you said. And not just when you were secretary of state, when you were the first lady. Covering for your husband and destroying women. That Bill Clinton destroyed. It wasn't, it wasn't enough that, and listen, ladies, you got to know this, that Hitler, Hillary Clinton protected her man and destroyed the women that Bill Clinton ruined sexually and ruined their careers. He was an abuser, and she was an enabler. And there was for one reason. It was for power, and she was greedy. And I tell you what, you know, there's certain people uh, in life that it's really hard to forgive. Hillary Clinton and Bill Clinton are two that I tell you what, very tough to be able to ever forgive because they took a lot of people out and a lot of people died around their administration. Mysterious deaths, uh, uh, talk show hosts that I know lost their jobs, ruined their livelihood, abused the uh, IRS, overreached. Um, You want to talk about uh, sleazy, overreach of power. They've done it. I've seen it. I've been a part of it. And I saw uh, the the founder of this program go down. 18-year audit. You can read about it. Just type in Chuck Harder silenced on Google. And you can see and read read all about how Hillary Clinton wrote from the Oval Office to take Chuck down. And this is what they do. And this is what they continue to do. They are very dirty. And they're blaming the Russians. The Russians have been spying on us. We've been spying on Russia. All countries do it. Israel's the best at it. As if this is something new. Please. You know why it's 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 it's, it's so amusing? It's because there's a lot of people in America that uh, they don't read much, or uh, it, it's that they have short attention spans that they don't even remember. What did one guy say? And whoever that guy was, pretty sharp guy. He said, never underestimate the stupidity of the American people. Not all, but there's a lot of ignorant Americans. They're in the dark. And the thing is, they like it that way. They'd rather be there. But the problem is, is they propagate garbage like Hillary Clinton's just doing. Oh, did you just hear what Hillary does? Yeah, that's that makes sense. Yeah, she would have been our president. She run the she won the popular vote. She won the popular vote. Well, that's not how elections are won in our country. It hasn't been for a long, long, come on. You know the story. Uh, By the way, I applaud CNN. I mean, it's tough for me to say this, but I applaud them. And they could have hung on to Gifford. But uh, Jeffrey Tobin has not been a fan of CNN. He's a legal analyst, not been a fan of President Donald Trump, but he has found one thing he could agree with him on. James Comey is a showboat. 
and uh, did not in, 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 uh, denounce, by the way, Gifford, which was great. On Wednesday's episode, which was yesterday, on the Situation Room with Wolf Blitzer, retired Rear Admiral John Kirby said that he disagreed with Trump's assessment on the fired FBI director. You have to do a violence uh, to the English language to call Jim Comey a showboat, Kirby said. He had been nothing but straightforward and straight-laced. But Tobin jumped in, pointing to Comey breaking Justice Department protocol when he held a July press conference laying out a case against Democratic presidential nominee Hillary Clinton then saying that she cannot be charged with a crime because no intent was provable. <laughs> ah, the other stuff is going to be the gift that keeps on giving for so long. I mean, it's just so evident even to the left, even on left-leaning CNN. Uh, That's what I say. Comey has been put in and put himself in these vicarious situations. It was so right, don't you know, for Donald Trump to fire James Comey. He should have just been fired immediately. Uh, It's just bad moves altogether. Would have been really the Boy Scout thing to do would have been to find her punishable uh, punished her get her the jumpsuit get the orange jumpsuit she should have gone to jail i should have made an example out of her but no they did not and so you think people in washington are quivering right now if you make her an example and a shining example of what she did now it's going to be totally acceptable to be able to walk out with laptop computers confidential information Oops, I gave it to the Russians. Oops, I gave it to another country. So if you have a mole, you got somebody that's working, it's going to be so much easier to let other people go. Oh, I didn't know what I was doing. Oh, oh, my bad. I, I didn't know. Nobody told me or I forgot. It seems to be a, a good thing for Hillary Clinton. I forgot. Forget about facts. Forget about uh, any of those particular things. She's going to do an Al Gore. She's going to sit there and she's going to whine for years and years and years. I could. The presidency was pulled from me. It was ripped from me. It was supposed to be mine. Give me a break. And by the way, don't blame Barack Obama for any of this. Forget about his failed policies for eight years, which really the truth of the matter is America was tired, sick and tired of the direction of this country and was afraid of where we were going, and it hit him, most importantly, in the pocketbook. The failed policies of the Obama administration have put us more in debt, less home ownerships, less jobs, and now jobs, since we got a Republican president, a great report, by the way, just out, private sector job growth, Rip roaring in May. ADP, jobs gain in the private sector far outpaced expectations in May. Payroll processor ADP said Thursday, adding a sentiment the U.S. economy is seeing a rebound in the second quarter from a sluggish first three month of the year. Private sector added 253,000 jobs last month, far outpacing Wall Street expectations for gains of 185,000 jobs. Business services, which includes technical services, management, and administrative and support services positions, saw its strongest monthly increase since 2014, adding 88,000 jobs for the month and uh, boasting the overall service providing sector 205,000 net new jobs. So growth, folks, growth, job growth is rip roaring. Mark Zandi, chief economist of Moody's Analytics, said in a statement, The current pace of job growth is nearly three times the rate necessary to absorb growth in the labor force. Increasingly, businesses' number one challenge will be the shortage of labor. Elsewhere, the goods producer sector adding 48,000 jobs as 37,000 new construction jobs came online, while information services and leisure and hospitality saw employment declines. So, folks, this is good news trickling down, not just from Wall Street, but to Main Street. More jobs, 
more money in the economy.